If you guys are looking for cheap, fast, and reliable Madden Ultimate Team coins, look no further than my sponsor, MuttReserve.com. They're super great. They got fast 24-7 support. Make sure to check them out, and make sure you use code Poodle at checkout for an additional 15% off your order. What's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video, guys. And today, we got a huge day in terms of Madden. I'm going to quickly go through these rising star cards. This is not the pro this is not the focus of our video. We got next-gen Madden 21 news. Now, guys, if you guys have been playing Madden 21 this year, and you guys have been underwhelmed, or you've been waiting for the next-gen version of the game, this is what we've been waiting for. This is the news. Will the game be different? Will they let us down? Will it be an entirely new game? Will it be 2K-esque where nothing's cross-compatible? You know, like, will everything just transfer and it's an entirely new game? We don't know yet. It's coming out um, as I record this. So I'm going to get over these rising stars real quick, keep this nice and short for you guys, go through them, and then head on over to the next gen news. So definitely watch through and stay tuned for that. But guys, before we get into the video, if you are new to the channel, subscribe, turn on the noti bell. If you guys want a chance to shout out the Poodle Squad, like the video, comment down below Poodle Squad, and turn on the noti bell. And of course, guys, shout out to today's Poodle Squad member, Hurlbert. And last, if you guys need coins uh, or trading or anything to pick up some of the Autumn Bas Blast cards or some of the Rising Stars, head over to Mart Reserve down below. They currently have a harvest discount going on. Use code Poodle for 15% off. Now, moving on, guys. First, we got Clyde Edwards Alaire. Biggest thing here, he has a Rook Premier. So, pretty much, if you guys have his Rook Premier, you're getting him for free. 89 speed, 91 excel, 91 agility. And he has 89 change of direction, 87 break tackle. He's just like a little, he's like a little muscle hamster. Just, you know, kind of like... Not so much muscle, more of like an, an, an agile hamster can just go around, do his thing. He's a decent backup, you know, like I don't think you start him at all on any team unless you're with Chiefs maybe. I don't think you play him. I think it's more like on that 10th run in a row and he just comes in and you're like, eh, I'll let, I'll let him take the inside zone. Moving on, we got TJ Hawkinson, tight end for the Lions. Now, he actually isn't that bad. 85 speed, 89 short, 87 medium. If you put play fake on him, he will get the route running thresholds. And he can catch. He's probably a pretty good budget tight end. I just wish he could be powered up. Now, maybe it's not showing it. I don't believe he does have a power up. Could be wrong, though. But if he could be powered up, he wouldn't be so, he wouldn't be so bad. Next up, Brian Burns. 87 speed, 89 excel, 86 tackle, 85 play rec, 80 block shed, 81 power move, 91 uh, finesse move. Guys, if you wanted a bud more budgety version of Julius Peppers, you couldn't find one because this is the one. 87 speed, 89 excel, great finesse move, bad block shed. This is literally baby Julius Peppers. Julius Peppers is stronger, though. Now, that strength may hurt him. I'm not sure if that's going to get him tossed around a lot, but Brian Burns overall on a budget squad, going to be one of the best budget pass rushers in the game. You're getting the speed and the finesse at a much lower cost. Obviously not a God squad, but on a budget squad, this is the, probably the best pass rusher you're going to find in the game. Then we got AJ Brown, wide receiver for the Tennessee Titans, 90 speed, 85 jumping, 89 catching, 84 catching traffic, 88 spec, 88 short, 86 medium, and 87 deep route running. Uh, this card, so well-rounded, super well-rounded to the point where I don't think it's great. Maybe get on a budget team, but he's not going to get any route running thresholds unless you rock with play fake or go deep. Now, if you do, you can pick one, but you know what I mean? Like, that's it. Is he going to be a short medium guy or a deep guy? So you got to pick there, and his catching's not going to be, it's going to be average. His speed's average. Nothing about him screams like, you know, off the page. So it's up to you guys on that one. Next, we've got AJ Terrell, cornerback for the Falcons. Now, he actually looks pretty good. 92 speed, 92 excel, 88 agility. 85 jumping, 85 play rec, 85 man, 89 zone, 87 press. So, chemmed up. If you look him up a lockdown, you can get his man to a 90, his play rec to a 90, I believe, his zone, and press all to 90s. So, if you get that all to 90s with the 92 speed, guys, he's looking super solid. Now, if you had a power, he'd be amazing. But even if you can't get it all to 90s, guys, you can at least get the zone to a 90, and he'd be a really decent 92 speed uh, zone guy. So, he's not bad at all. Not too bad in terms of that, but is it for the rising stars, guys? Let's get to the next gen news again. I didn't want to make this part too long because we do have a lot to go over, so let's go check all that out. Guys, okay, so the gridiron notes are live for the next gen stats. Now, there is the live stream going on. If you guys want to watch that, you can, but I just prefer the notes. I, I'm more of a reader, I don't like people telling me things, it just takes way too long. I'd much rather read it and then reciprocate it to you guys as quickly as possible. But either way, guys, I will show you there's a trailer up on YouTube going over it as well. If you guys want to see some live game slate level stuff, I will show you some screenshots of that. But here we go. They introduced next-gen player movement, which is supposed to be a huge thing here. Now, I, I can see where they're coming from on this. Pretty much, there's been chips in people in their shoulder pads for years now. They've been tracking player movement. So, you know in Madden, when you're running with a running back, like, they kind of all look the same. Like, when they after they juke, they kind of all look like they're running the same exact way. So, apparently, they were tracking how their body moves and stuff. So, like, pretty much, it's supposed to look more like them. I don't know how accurate that is, but it would be cool if Odell running, you know, looks like Odell. And Dion running looks like Dion and all that other stuff. Now, I don't know if that worked with Legends, but you guys get the point. So they're supposed to change the way gameplay feels entirely. So next gen stats, uh, they use RFID tags placed in their shoulder pads, charting individual movements within inches. So you guys know when you're watching a game and it's like DK Metcalf ran 22 miles per hour, it's like that's what tracks all that stuff. So they're saying next gen stats equals next gen player movement. So that's pretty cool. So feel the most elite NFL athletes at every position move on the virtual field like they do in the real world. Now that's what I'm saying. Like if Tyreek Hill looks like Tyreek Hill and does what he does, like this could be huge. This will make the game feel like Sunday. You know, it doesn't just, because right now, Sunday feels like football, 
and then Monday through Saturday feels like Madden, right? Like, it feels like Madden. It feels like virtual, right? If they can make it look realistic, that'd be so good. So, unique movements per archetype. So, ball carriers are agile, agile small, agile tall, bruiser, bruiser quick, bruiser heavy. So, that's cool. So, that's the thing. So, I used to hate when Derrick Henry was a, you know, six foot three bruiser. And let's say, like, the, again, just an example. Let's say Devonta Freeman was a five foot, you know, seven bruiser, right? They're trucking. Everything about them looks the same, right? Now, it's going to be bruiser bruiser quick bruiser heavy bruiser so like a bruiser heavy will be like derrick henry like a big body bruiser he gets those crazy power animations bruiser quick might be the like the more agile ones like a dalvin cook that's a bruiser but he's also quick so like he's gonna get those quick little stiff arm right off of you right it might not be the craziest animations where you completely destroy the guy but you can get away from them agile tall like todd Gurley, you know he's one of the taller backs agile saquon barkley taller agile small could be like you know barry sanders i like that route runners uh, there's Agile, Agile Small, which would be like Agile Small for tight end would be like Evan Ingram. This is cool, a pass block move for all linemen. Then there's next gen stats and route running, so they did try, uh, so let's see. The same deep crossing route reflected by Devonta Adams and Madden NFL gameplay. This result is natural feeling, fluid routes, and more rounded turns. So instead of, you know, like every guy, if they have above a 90 route running threshold, you know how their ends look, right? It's like, cut, go. Maybe it'll look like how they actually do it, like the little fake they do to the left, No. That could be cool. Before, on previous gens, our receivers ran from one specific point to another specific point at top speed all the time, made very similar cuts with very little difference. Our next gen player ratings and archetypes will heavily impact the quality and speed of each route as they run as an and they will be run as an entire route from start to finish rather than each individual portion of a route on previous gen. Next gen stats and defense. So next gen stats also brought improvements, AI pursuits, so when AI controlled defenders are pursuing a ball carrier, they will now get in better position to make a play. So that's great because we used to have to click on early and completely, we like, see, uh, the AI would run like this. I'd have to click on and run around the guy so I can get into position for the tackle. If AIs do that, it's even better. And then let's see if we got anything else. Um, animation engine, more natural looking athletic. Players will react and break on plays more consistently and predictably. That's good too. Because, yeah, you know, I always hated, like, I'm in a flat. My receiver completely jumps it. My cornerback, right? Or their cornerback jumps. So next time I see a flat like that open, I don't throw it. And they throw it against me, and now my cornerback doesn't jump it. I'm like, okay, so now it's 50 50 ball, right? Like, I like to know that if that's what if they're in cover two and they're like this, that shouldn't be open. But the thing, the fact that they can be half the time, really throws off a game plan because you think you can throw it and then you can't. Next gen powered replays, uh, that's not really that important. So primary next gen stat replay triggers. So completed air distance, rushing distance, ball carrier speed. That's actually cool though. Ball carrier speed, nice. If you break off some crazy play and get some big speed boost and go running down the field and it shows like ball carrier speed, like, you know, you broke 22 miles per hour with Tyreek Hill, like that'd be cool to see. Um, this isn't that important. Next gen play calling is another cool feature they added. It's, to provide a solid foundation for the player movement system, we also made a significant update to our play calling system, giving players more control to call the best plays for the right players on every down. By You can do by player calling. And now you can keep all of your preferred plays on speed dial with a new favorite a play marker and playbook tab. I love that, guys. So I play in a franchise where you can't go ahead and make custom playbooks, which is fine. That's completely fair. But I love the fact that I can now do a favorite play place tab. I'll go ahead. I'll pick like 20, 25 of my favorite plays. I'll just run through that. That'll be my playbook. You know what I mean? Like, that's cool. I like that. I'll call that my playbook. Like, that's what I run out of specifically. I get rid of all the ugly plays I don't like. A lot less looking. You could spend... I always hate when you spend half the play clock looking for the play. And then by the time you find it, like, oh, I want the other one. But it's too late, right? Now you can just run through. You can decide. You know all your plays are there. Matter of what you want to run. And I do like the buy player play calling. Because sometimes when you're in the red zone. And they haven't been able to stop Lamar or Kyler Murray today. And you're like, I need to play for... I need to dial up what Kyler Murray run right now. And you have to go looking through a bunch of different formations instead. Everything will be regarding how what Lamar's going to be able to score on, right? Or you know that you're, you're killing them with Devontae Adams route running? Go Devontae Adams plays. We're going to bring up all the best uh, route combos that have Devontae Adams on a route. But here we go. We made the play call screen more intuitive, user-friendly, while still having depth and power to our core fans love. You'll also be able to see your superstar X factor and their stats for the game. Oh, you can see their stats here too. So that's cool too because I used to hate, again, when you're playing, you want to know what their stats look like. Of course, you know, it's, it's football. You want to know how good you're doing with a certain player. Now, additional gameplay improvements. So, pass lead. Next-gen stats and player movements open up the abilities to lead receivers on deep routes more effectively. I do like that because it was kind of like one or the other, right? You leaned a little bit to the left. It went all the way to the left, to the right, all the way to the right, deep. It went it went deep. You know what I mean? Like, now it should be like, you know, you'll you'll drop it over the top into a little tight window out of the left instead of just going out of bounds. Right? Like, if you, if you do a lead to the left too far to bounce, you can go out of bounds. I do like that. The run game, it's easier to read running lanes and find those satisfying cutback lanes. I like that. Cutback lanes were kind of dead this year. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. Cutback lanes were not the same. I used to love when I run zone right, and as the line pushes right, you cut back there. You know what I mean? Now, this year, it's kind of been like the line and the defensive line meet at a standstill, and you got to like cut through a hole, which is 
you know, it's football, but I haven't really been seeing those, yeah, that cutback lane where the line gets pushed to the right and you, you cut it back. You know and I mean, I like that. Quarterback movement, movement in and out of the pocket is smooth and athletic. You also feel the differentiate differentiation and movement all over the field and comparing pocket pass to mobile cute quarterbacks. I like that too because here's the thing. Mobile quarterbacks just feel like faster pocket pass. You know what I mean? Like when I'm playing with Eli or Big Ben or let's just say Aaron Rodgers, right? Aaron Rodgers isn't a mobile quarterback. He's a let's call him an improviser. He can be mobile, but he's not he's not Lamar or Kyler Murray, right? So I hate the fact that when I scramble to the right with Kyler and Aaron, they feel the same for the first two seconds until Kyler picks up his speed. And then even after that, he kind of just feels like a fast quarterback, right? He doesn't feel super agile in the open field. He doesn't feel like super jukey. He just feels like a fast player that comes out of the quarterback spot. Aaron Rodgers, open field, feels the same way. Now, what I'm hoping for exactly, how you see Kyler Murray in real life being super twitchy and fast, I want to see something along those lines. That's kind of what I want to be seeing for this as a whole. I'm hoping that does make, you know, Kyler Murray feel at, like, I want to be able to stop and go in the backfield like he does. Like, when an end comes in flying, I want to be able to do a quick little stop and run right around them. Head tracking. Um, so where they're looking, make them look more aware on the field action, which is cool because yeah, it was kind of annoying when receivers are looking to know where you throw a catch, they turn around, they moss you like exactly. They should be looking back at the ball. Like, you know, when you're running a streak, keep looking back and checking for it. Tackling the new rally tech, uh, improved gang tackles, gang tackles, will trick them more often, which much more variety. That's cool. Cause they were all the same. Um, about it for that. Now moving on from that guys, we got improved pass rush timing, moving at more realistic speed. The pass rush is more of an impact relative to the time relationship between the quarterback drop back. Okay. Uh, blazing fast load times. So we've known that. So load times are going to be crazy fast. Like, they were crazy fast on current gen Madden on next gen. So I can only imagine that if you go on to next gen Madden with the next gen version, of the game would be even crazier. But, guys, that's about it for the video. If you guys want to check out the trailer screenshots, there's nothing too crazy in there, but you can go check it out. It's on YouTube, so make sure you check that out. That's about it for the video. Enjoy the rest of your day. Um, subscribe, turn on that notification, join the family. I'm out. Peace.